Hello there everyone, we're at the Royal Astronomical Society. I'm here with astronomer Sheila Kanani. We're going to talk about Carolyn Herschel, who I know is a real favourite of yours. Yes, yeah, she is. She was quite a character. She was an original Cinderella, so she was born in 1750. She lived till she was 97. She was born in Germany, but she was born into a family where she was expected to do kind of chores and drudgery. And then she moved with her brother William to the UK and they both got interested in astronomy and she thought of herself as someone who just did his work for him but actually she found eight comets in her time. She was the first female astronomer to be paid for her work. Um, she did all amazing things and she was very very humble. She was the first female person to win the gold award at the Royal Astronomical Society in 1828 and she was just a force. She was a real trailblazer. Yeah. She, yeah, had, she, was. <laughs> she had a lot of firsts, in case you haven't noticed. We're going to look at a few things to do with her. One of the first things, which I find really interesting, this is a letter that she's writing to the Royal Society. She's writing it to Dr. Blagden, who was at the Royal Society at the time. And this is kind of how she has her magic moment. Basically, until this point, she'd been like a note taker for mm -hmm. William in a lot of ways. He would sit at this humongous telescope he'd built making observations and she would be what, sitting with him, writing things? Yeah, she'd be taking notes, she'd spend all night in the horrible conditions doing exactly what he said. But it sounds like she didn't get much time at the telescope, but all of that changes here. This is in 1786 and she writes to Blagden, in consequence of the friendship which I know to exist between you and my brother, William, I venture to trouble you in his absence with the following imperfect account of a comet. The employment of writing down the observations when my brother uses the 20 feet reflector does not often allow me time to look at the heavens. But as he is now on a visit to Germany, so William's gone home to Germany and this, mm -hmm. is, this is her big chance, I have taken the opportunity of his absence to sweep in the neighbourhood of the sun in search of comets. And last night, the 1st of August, about 10 o'clock, I found an object very much resembling in colour and brightness the 27 nebula. I suspected it to be a comet. So basically William's gone away and, and she she's... said, now's my chance. Mm -hmm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump on the telescope and she's had this discovery. But this is obviously a big breakthrough. She finds yeah. her own comet here mm -hmm. and this is the start of something special. Yeah, and she goes on to find eight in total. So also here at the Royal Astronomical Society, we have some journal and observation books of Carolyn's. All her observations with the beautiful drawings as well. They are really nice to read. They've got lots of science in them, but they also have lots of things about like the weather and what it was like to be doing it. It was cloudy. This evening is very fine, but I cannot find the comet. <laughs> yeah, I like that one. I have swept all this evening for my comet in vain. So, so she's obviously <laughs> seen a comet and then she's gone back like the next night and she can't find it and she's really frustrated. But look at this on the same night that she can't find her comet. She's saying, my brother showed me the George Cetus in the 20 feet telescope and I saw both its satellites very plainly. That's so pretty that, cool. So that's obviously not long after he's discovered what we now call Eurydice, yep. and she's looking at it. Growing up as an astrophysicist, you're not taught how to keep lab books, but you're told the importance of them. And I guess it doesn't really kind of hammer home until you read somebody else's. And you learn, well, I learned about Caroline Herschel mostly since working at the RAS. But then to read things that she's actually written and being able to feel her personality coming through, I feel quite honoured that we've got all these tomes about her and, and written by her. She was, like I said, an original Cinderella and she sort of, it wasn't about finding Prince Charming, it was about finding comets uh, and that's even better. So what we've got here is a star atlas. This was by Flamsteed at the time, another very famous name in astronomy, mm -hmm. but this was the Herschel's copy. Yeah, you can see that it has been used very, very extensively. Yeah. It was owned primarily by Caroline, but William and John would have worked on it as well over the years. So here's like the original yeah. sort of, you know, cover plate and the picture of Flamsteed. But what have we got here? So there wasn't an index to the book, but she's put that in herself so she could look through the book of her own accord. So she's like, Flamsteed, you didn't, do it, you didn't put an index <laughs> and in. And that's not the only thing that she's added to it. So next to lots of the stars here in the atlas, we see little red numbers yep. and little notes being written. These are additions they're making. Yep, so the red numbers, she actually preempted a numbering system, so Flamsteed hadn't added that to the star atlases, and she did that before he did. So she's numbering the stars. Oh, we see like little, we see marks here like Smudges. this. Smudges. They're making a right mess of her. <laughs> they used it. Now this is interesting, on this page here, here we have the constellation 
Cetus, which some people know as a sea monster. Mm -hmm. It's also known as a whale. And in here we have a little piece of paper that says, show me the whale, auntie. What's all this about, Sheila? So that little insert was put in by Myra Hardcastle, who was John Herschel's granddaughter. So it would have been Caroline Herschel's great granddaughter. And she is referring to a memory where John used to ask Caroline to show him this particular page because this image of the sea monster is particularly monstrous. And he must have been like, auntie, auntie, show me the whale. And been scared by this picture, I guess. So William <laughs> Herschel's son. Yep. John Herschel, who yeah. became a very great astronomer in his own right, yeah. and obviously Carolyn was his auntie, mm -hmm. would be standing almost like we are right here. Yeah, as a and child, probably. So we can imagine <laughs> little John next, next looking as well, saying, oh, can you show me, show <laughs> me, the, show whale. me the whale? So this was probably his favourite page. Yeah, I imagine so. And that note was written by his granddaughter. Right, as a little family story yes. that John used to like this page, the whale you can, page. You can see why. It is quite hideous. And this page here, which shows the constellation Andromeda, is another interesting one, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So if you look towards the chin of an Andromeda, you can see some pencil marks and smudges and the word comet. Okay. Very, very faint, I guess. That was one of Carolyn's comets, was it? Yeah, so she discovered, that was the fourth one she discovered in 1790. There we go. It's quite exciting, isn't it, going through these pages that she's it, touched and written yeah, on and things like that? I think like. that's why I like them and the memoirs and the observation books as well. You kind of feel how they might have felt, you know, like looking over their shoulder almost at what they found. This episode of Objectivity was brought to you by 23andMe, the genetic service that will help you learn what the 23 pairs of chromosomes that make up your DNA can teach you about your ancestry, traits and health. If you'd like to help with scientific research and discoveries, or just learn your own personal DNA story, go to 23andMe.com objectivity.